What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on day 87 for the second time. Hallelujah. Psalm 87. A psalm of the sons of Korah. A song. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Hallelujah. And... We, we read this in the NIV. It says, uh, He has founded his city on the holy mountain. And mountains represent kingdoms. His holy mountain is his kingdom. Basically, uh, you know, heaven. And, uh, and maybe a physical mountain too. Um, I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. I'll just leave that there for right now. Um, I can't speak on something I don't understand. The, uh, and LT reads, on, on the holy mountain stands a city founded by the Lord, founded by Yahuwah. Yahuwah loves the gates of Zion. His kingdom, his... His dwelling place. More than all the other dwellings, dwelling places of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Selah. Hallelujah. Glorious things are spoken of the city of God, his, uh, which is his coming kingdom. And I always kind of correlated. Let me just continue. I shall mention Rahab and Babylon among those who know me. Basically bragging on God. Bragging about God. Because Rahab, that's the Leviathan that he slew, that he killed in the beginning. And we went th through this in the last uh, chapter of Job, Job 31, of Job 41, and there's one more chapter that I'm going to do tonight, Lord willing. Um, and we talked about how there's, uh, it's believed there are two, it seems there's two uh, Leviathan, and he already killed one, and he's going to kill the other one in the last days. And potentially uh, it's going to be what were served at the wedding feast. I shall mention Rahab and Babylon among those who know me. Like I said, bragging about God for destroying Rahab, for destroying Babylon. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This one was born there, but of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were, bur were, bur were born in her. So, this is speaking about being born again. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We read this in 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the perish the imperishable. We have to be born again into a new glorified body, a spirit body. And this is why when John was caught up in the book of Revelation, when he was caught up through the open door, he said, I was in a spirit on the Lord's day, because flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Just over here, an idea. A depiction of the kingdom of uh, the New Jerusalem, the city of God. It's 1,500 miles squared or cubed. 
So 1,500 miles high. This place is going to be so amazing, right? Beyond anything we've ever imagined before. And before I speak more about born again, over here in Isaiah 51 verse 9, says, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of Yahuwah. Awake as in the days of old, the generations of old. Was it not you who cut, in, cut Rahab in pieces, who, who pierced the dragon? And that's what I, what I was just talking about with the, the other Leviathan. But here, in John chapter 3, I'm going to start from the beginning of the chapter. It says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Water being the human birth and the Spirit being the the spirit birth that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit of the spirit is spirit do not be amazed that I said to you you must be born again the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it, where it is going so is everyone who is born of the spirit like the wind um, goes where it wishes you may hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from um, or where it's going. Just, uh, just, like, uh, just like angels, angels, even demons, uh, they have the, the spirit, the spirit body, um, which right now we're just in the physical, we're just flesh and blood right now. Even though we have a spirit and we have the Holy Spirit, this is speaking about being born again in a spirit body, just like Jesus. When um, after his resurrection, he uh, he just appeared to them when they were they were all in, in the room together, eleven of them, and he just showed up in their midst because. Uh, in that realm, in the spirit, you can basically, um, I guess, you know, <laughs> pretty much become invisible, you know, you can become a physical form or, or not the way it looks, the way it seems. And, uh, just like, uh, just like the angels, you know, and and it's interesting when when it comes down to it, um, we don't understand this stuff, but but uh, our we can only see as humans, we can only see on a certain spectrum, certain uh, certain frequencies uh, of of what's really there. I mean, I mean, there's stuff going on around us that we can't see or hear. It's uh. It's crazy to think about, but that's what it is. And that's why, you know, angels can be there to protect us, but we don't see them. But then we could also, angels could be in, in, in the physical as well, because, you know, Paul said, basically, uh, I don't want to misquote it. Basically, he said, do, 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 do good to every, everyone. Show love to everyone, because you never know when you might be... Uh, Dealing with an angel, entertaining an angel. I mean, we may come across angels in uh, in this in this life in a physical form, 
Just like there's, uh, I believe, fallen angels here in the physical form as humans. And, um, you know, I believe there, I do believe the, that there was one, I'll just tell the story real quick. My sister and brother-in-law, this is about 10, 15 years ago, they were in a car accident. And, um, they pretty much ran, ran off the road and hit a tree and, uh, the car started smoking and they got out and, um, or my, my brother-in-law got out and he was, he was trying to get my sister out and the door was jammed and everything. And, um, and this was before they were married, I think, but, um, so pretty much right, right after that happened, some old lady pulled, pulled off, uh, pulled up behind them, either behind them or in front of them, and uh, came up to them, said said she went to this church down the road, and she was on the way there, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, kept assuring them that everything's going to be fine, not to worry, and, uh, and then it was a couple... It was a couple minutes away from uh, my parents' house, maybe like five minutes down the road. So my dad, once he once he got the call, he was there. He just sped up the road. He was there like five less than five minutes, probably. And um, that lady was already there, and he he saw her and he talked to her, and they talked to her, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting like a little, I guess a little choked up just speaking about this because it's crazy, you know. Um, and so, uh, so not long after, uh, cops showed up and ambulance showed up and and the ambulance was parked either right behind or right in front of the lady's car. See, see, my my dad and my my sister and brother in law they talked to this lady. They saw her car and everything, and so. So when they were doing the report, they asked, uh, "Were there any other witnesses? Uh, was was anybody uh, was anybody else here or anything?" And um. And my dad mentioned uh, the lady. And. Uh, and basically, after after they arrived, she ended up leaving uh, before this happened. And uh, my dad m- mentioned the lady. I think it was him that mentioned the lady. And um, <laughs> and they said they said they didn't see. They said they didn't see anybody else there. They said they didn't see another car there or anything. But the ambulance was parked either right behind or right in front of uh, the lady's car. But they said they didn't see it. <laughs> So, you know, it's crazy, you know. God got us. We trust in him and and he delivers us. And, you know, our God is greater than all. And he had his, I believe he had one of his angels there um, with them that day. And uh, I know there's been plenty of times he's, he saved me and delivered me. Uh, There was a bad car, car accident. I was in a couple years ago and um and I'm not so sure it wasn't intentional. It was right after um I just got it like a bunch of gospel tracks and and I was sending them out to different people. I just sent like 500 to one person and 200 to another person or something and I had like two more batches that I was getting ready to send out to people and um uh, and I had just just gotten these bumper stickers on my car. I had like five different Bible verse bumper stickers all over my car, and I was doing delivery. So everywhere I, I, I was going, I was spreading the gospel. And um, then all of a sudden, I'm going down the road 45 miles an hour, and uh, I was going about 45, 50, and um, someone acted like they were going to turn uh, across my lane. Like it was two two way road, they acted like they were gonna, gonna turn across my lane, 
but they, they just pulled in the lane and just stopped. And I tried to swerve and um, didn't completely miss them. It was pretty much still a head-on collision, but just with the left front of my car rather than st head straight head-on. But, uh, you know, I was, I was bruised up and limping for a couple weeks, but I was, I was fine. I was, uh, it was like my, my car was completely destroyed. It was completely totaled. And, um, and matter of fact, let me, uh, let me show you a picture. I should have a picture on here still. I know it's on my phone, but, uh, I'm gonna see if it's on my, might take me a while to find that, but I think it's on my Facebook page. So, so give me a second and I'll try to find that, uh, find this picture of my car, but but we, we must be born again in the, in the spirit, into a new spirit body. And that's our glorified body that, uh, that will enter the kingdom of God. And we can't enter the kingdom of God in this physical flesh and blood body, but only in the, in the spirit body. And that's what, uh, being born again really is. And, uh, Give me one second, I should be able to pull this up. And then we'll get back to, and then we'll finish up the chapter. Give me a second. All right, here we go. Should be, should have it on here. Yeah, here we go. So here's my car from this accident. And like I said, I, I'm not so sure it was an accident because someone just, the lady just uh, pulled in my lane and just stopped. And then th their car was totally destroyed too. And she had two, two kids with her and she didn't even want to get them checked out by the paramedics and she was acting weird and you know, it was all suspect. But here's my car, completely destroyed. But I, I swerved to the right to try to miss her and um, it would have been head on, head on if I didn't swerve. And uh, and if I swerved too much, I probably would have ran off the road and hit a tree, and it might have been worse. But uh, but it was a serious accident. But I was, I ended up fine. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt or anything, and I ended up all right. I mean, by the grace of God, I know He had, you know, I know He was protecting me. I know He had His angels there in the spirit protecting me hallelujah but back here to psalm 87 i shall mention rahab and babylon among those who know me behold philistia and tyre with ethiopia this one was born there but of zion it shall be said this one and that one were, were, born, were, were born in her. And the Most High himself will establish her. Yahuwah will count when he registers the people. This one was born there, Selah. Then those who sing as well as those who play the flute shall say, All my springs of joy are in you. Hallelujah. Praise be to our God. Our God is so amazing. Our God delivers. Hallelujah. 
Our God delivers. So many times he's delivered me out of different situations and I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it at all. But our God is gracious. Yah is gracious. Yah is merciful. We praise him. And we trust in him. If God is on our side, who can be against us? So let's stay strong in faith, brothers and sisters. Even though we go through tough, tough times sometimes, and even though uh, God may let us let some of us go through really tough times here in these last days, through different persecutions and being taken and stuff, no matter what, we continue to trust Him because we, because we know He's He's greater than all, and He's going to deliver us in the end. We just have to endure. Those who endure to the end will be saved. Hallelujah. So let's keep faith in Him. Let's keep trusting in Him. Let's keep depending on Him. Let's work for Him. Let's spread the gospel. The kingdom has come soon to come. Let's spread the gospel. Let's shine His light through obedience and being holy, set apart to God. And let's show His love to the world. Let's be ready, brothers and sisters. We're living in the last days, and there's really not a lot of time left. Um, maybe a year, if that. I don't. I think. I don't think we're going into 2022 without the tribulation start time beginning. Maybe not even since 2021. We'll see. Um, God might just cut it off at the end of the year, the end of 2020. Who knows? Only time will tell. Only God knows. No man knows the day or the hour. But we know that we know what to look for. We know what's going to happen in the last days leading up to his return. And it's happening. It's, it's literally, literally happening right off the pages of the Bible. So we know what time it is. We need to be ready. We need to make sure we're right with him. Let's make sure we have a pure heart and clean hands. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve his forgiveness. We don't deserve his blessings. We don't deserve his protection. But he is our father. We just need to be obedient children and do what we're supposed to do. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. There's not a lot of time left. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. The Bible tells us what, what to look for, what's going to happen in the last days leading up to the tribulation time and uh, the worst, the wrath of God, the worst period of time in the history of the world and the return of Jesus for his people. The Bible tells us what's going to happen, what to look for. And it's happening. It's happening. We're living in the last days. Prophecies are being fulfilled. Hundreds of prophecies are being fulfilled right now. By the day. It's only a matter of time. Until it all goes down. It's, uh, God has a timeline. He has a 6,000 year plan for mankind. And uh, we're right at the end of the 6,000 years. Jesus came at, came at 4,000 years. It's been 2,000 years since uh, him. And we're right there. And Israel is also a, a time clock for the last days. And Israel was recreated as a nation 72 years ago. And Jesus said that generation will not pass away until all things are fulfilled. There's a, including a seven year tribulation. And the Bible says a generation is 70 years to 80 years. If we're at 72 years, plus a seven-year tribulation, that means it has to be in the next year. And based on everything happening, based on all these prophecies being fulfilled, we're there. We're, we're, we're really there. It's a, it ain't no doubt about it. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. Don't waste your opportunity. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your chance. 
We're talking about eternal life. This, this life here is short. And especially this life that we're living here is short right now because it's time. It's time. God has a set time for all things to be fulfilled. And we're there. We're living in the last days according to the Bible. And um, even if we did have a, whole, a full lifetime to live, this life is short. And what matters is what's next. And that's eternal life. It's either eternal life or permanent death. See, the wages of sin is death. The punishment for our sin is death. That's the second death. Permanent death of body and soul in a lake of fire. But the free gift of God is eternal life. See, God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order, order to live forever. None of us are perfect, so we can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn our way to eternal life. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. But Jesus was perfect. That's why God sent him. That's why Jesus came and was born as a person, born as a man, lived a perfect life, did nothing wrong, and still took on the punishment for us, made the sacrifice for us. He died on the cross for us, raised after three days, was taken back to heaven and is soon going to return for his people. And if you believe that, you will have eternal life because it's through faith, through faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross that we're saved. He's the bridge. He's the ladder to heaven. Through faith, we have our sins wiped away and receive his perfection and are made right with God. We receive his righteousness, his perfection, and are made right with God. And that's the only way to be made right with God. The only way. Through faith in what he did. So repent and believe the gospel. That's the gospel. The word, the word repent just means having a change of mind, a change of heart, deciding to turn from your old life, turn it from your sins, turn it from the way you used to live, and turn it to God, just giving your life to Him, submitting to Him. So give your life to Jesus Christ today. We're living in the last days. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your opportunities because judgment is coming soon. And um, judgment on this earth is coming soon, but judgment, uh, but we're all going to be ju judged according to to our works and our works are the Bible says our works are like like filthy rags where our works uh, none of us are perfect our works are dirty so we have to be cleansed and the only way to be cleansed is through faith in Jesus so turn to him turn to Jesus give your life to him today we're living in the last days that's the end of Psalm 87 thank you guys for tuning in love y'all Shalom